So today we are replacing our Brower waters with Richie waters. When we bought the place, it had these Brower waters on here. I think they're like the Mark 32 E's. Um, they're insulated. I'm not sure if they came heated or not from Browers, but they were running heat lamps in them. So there's already electrical and water ran out here to them. But they haven't been used in years, so they've, they're kind of in disarray. Some of them were, most of them were missing parts. This one kind of worked, but it didn't work. Right now you can see it's frozen up. So we decided, we decided instead of trying to rebuild the Browers, because I've had an issue trying to find parts actually, um, just to go ahead and look and see if there was anything better out there. So we found Richie's and did some reading on the reviews and we ended up going with Richie's instead of Brower this time. Which to be honest, and it's just my opinion, I just looking at the Richie's compared to the Browers, they're a way updated design. And I was a little concerned because they're a plastic type water, but they're foam filled. And once you see them compared to this metal Brower, I, I actually like the Richie's better. Again, just my opinion. What, I may eat those words when it gets cold, but so far everything's been working good. We would have reduced our breaker too. We had four of these tanks running heating elements then I had to bump the breaker up. Luckily there's heavy gauge wire in here. I had to bump the breaker up to a 40 amp to keep it from tripping. And uh, with, with these Richies, and I need to go back and look in the book, it said they pulled 2.5 amps. So I'm not sure because there's dual heating elements in them. I'm not sure if that's five amps total or just 2.5 amps total, but ran those two Richies last night off a 15 amp breaker with no issues. So you can see that just off the numbers, and I hate math, that this will actually save us money in the long run too on electrical consumption during the winter. I'm gonna take this out, and then we're gonna redo the electrical box with a weatherproof one. And we're also gonna redo the valving in this box and just kind of rejuvenate the whole system to a little bit to a little bit newer modern system. So here we go. Apparently Charlie wants to help. Charlie, what you doing Charlie? <laughs> so we got the brower off of here and you can see like you can see the casing with the water line so this actually doesn't look too bad. You can see where they pulled power so they ran one continuous loop. Um, we're gonna replace this. This, uh, this is already been tested to ensure there's no voltage but we're going to replace this with a waterproof box with the GFI in it as well and then we're going to take this valve out right here at this reducer and we're going to change out this valve with a newer model valve and get rid of this hose and use the hose that comes with the Richie water so right now I got to get these anchors cut off Browers uses side anchors the Richie anchors are going to go on the ends so I scraped all this off and I'm just going to take the grinder and knock these down flat. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as they're flat so the Richie will get a good seal on the bottom. So here we go. Now then, what I need to do is I need to go in and grab the parts and I'm going to rebuild the water valve with the new one first because right now we have the water on so everybody has water, the horses do because they're eating. And then once I get it all built and ready to go, I'll run out to the well, cut the water off and then we'll pull this, put the new one on and then I'll turn the water back on and then I'll work electrical. That way all the animals can have their water and all that stuff. So let me go get the parts and we'll build out a valve real quick. Okay. While I'm in here, I just want to replace everything because what the goal of this is not only get our horses fresh water, but also not go through what we went through when we first moved in when that weather, that cold snap hit out of nowhere and then everything was frozen and we had frozen water everywhere. The water spigot was frozen, everything was frozen. So we had a hard time just getting water out here to the animals that was a fight in itself so we're gonna harden our facility against that so that doesn't happen anymore and if it does happen again it will not happen like it did the first time where we still have other means to get water to our animals 
So basically what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna run, we're gonna put this together coming off the 90, put this right here, ball valve goes like so, and then barb comes out of it like this, and then we're gonna spin that and face it this way because the tube and the Richie comes down and I just roll the water right into it, the, uh, the feed line supply right into it. So now it's just a simple matter of taping some stuff up and getting it together. All right, so we got everything built. Ooh. And we got the water turned off. And we got the water turned off. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to get this valve off. Theoretically, I should be able to turn the water on. We shouldn't have any leaks. So, let me go run and turn the water on. Let's see if we got some leaks. So, real quick, here's the old Brower uh, Model 32. And here's the Ritchie. Uh, this is an Omni 2 Ritchie. So you can kind of see some of the size differences and everything. So, on the Ritchie, this lifts up. And then, of course, here's all my hardware and everything else that I'm gonna need. To install it but you can see that it has a stainless steel bowl plastic float there's a stanchion tube that I'll show you and then this just sits on top of it and it's easily removable doesn't bolt up or anything so access if you want to look in here real quick so they use disc type thermostat right here and then there's twin heaters that sit underneath the bowl and then this is actually a heat trace that is tied in uh, thermostatically too. So basically you run your power cord. I'm not hardwiring it, I'm running it to a, an outlet. So I just run a sleeve of 12-2 Romax to a plug about 18 inches so I can plug in. Just makes it easier to take off and on. So you can kind of see how the Richie's designed. Here's the Browers. So this is an older model. This is metal versus plastic but the trough itself is plastic versus stainless steel on the Ritchie. So here's my float assembly. It's got little wings on it to protect it, but you have to actually unbolt it to get to the assembly in there. If you wanna look up underneath there too, it's very simple design. Here's your one pipe going up in there for your line feed. And then where this is, where this is burned or blackened, this is where the heating lamps were being ran to, to keep this warm, the heat lamp down here. The problem is, is your heat lamp's on the ground. If this thing has a leak or anything, water hits your heat lamp, it, it'll it just frag your bulb out. And then everything freezes up on you. And once this thing freezes up, it freezes up solid, like the one I removed earlier. This is actually one of the other units that was dry. So you can see here too, so there's a plug that actually sits right here in the Browers. There's a rubber plug, it's just out right now and it drains out the side on the Ritchie over here. It's on this side right here. It is actually built in right here is the drain port and then your plug is on the outside right here so you don't have to stick your hand in the water. Your plug sits out here. You just pull this plug right here to drain it and then plug it back to clean the bowl. I'm more of a metal person versus plastic. Um, these come with a 10 year warranty. So we're gonna give them a go. And in all honesty, I've seen these freeze and I've seen plastic freeze and it all does the same thing. So we're gonna see how these work out for us. So far, I'm happy with them. I think, what did it get down to tonight? 20 something degrees? Mm -hmm. And everything's working just fine. So let's get this thing put over there and we'll mark our holes and run our lags. And then everything else is just finishing up the install. So we're trying to get this old outlet off, not trying, we're getting it off. And you can kind of see how it was wired up. Um, when we first got out here, I needed this outlet for power to heat that tank to get our animals some water. So not gonna lie, what it looked like inside that, the one that was here, was like a winter wonderland of ice. So I propped it up on wood to get it up off the ground and then plugged everything in and it was the best we could do at the time. 
we're gonna redo this now so this doesn't happen again because I hate electricity as it is and I really hate electricity when I'm covered in water and it's covered in water installed more of a, a wet location box or a bell box I think is what these are called capped it a weather resistant uh, outdoor GFI and again this is not really perfect wiring I understand that so for right now I'm just trying to get this where it's in a suitable configuration which if you look at what we had I'm pretty sure somebody would say at least would agree with me that that's a little bit better than what we had sitting here in the first place so the electrical is done we just put the ritchie water in place so now we are going to line it up as best we can actually that looks pretty good so now i'm just going to mark my holes so i can set my anchors and i just i just do a dot with a sharpie once i get that done lift this guy back off And now it's just a matter of masonry bit on the hammer drill. Thank you. And we will get these drilled out. How deep do you have to make them? So it says. It says a minimum of an inch and a half. These are five inch anchors, according to Richie, that's what they wanted. So I'm running it probably about three inches deep. So I'll run it to about there. And then when I drive them down, I'll just throw a tape on them and I'll do two and a half inches to the top. And uh, the way I came up with that is once we foam the bottom of this for the seal, I set the first one on there and measured how high it was off the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then two and a half inches sits about right. So that's what I set all those at. So we're gonna set our anchors. Got the holes drilled. Make sure you put your nuts on the uh, anchors. There's a couple different ways you can do this. The picture shows you doing it uh, on the box. It actually shows you tapping it. Like if I had a flat plate, then it would probably be easy, but you can't get in there on those to the access. So I just set these to depth and then slide the water over and down. And then we're just gonna tap it in there. Take a look at where we're at. Ooh, it's almost there. So you can see I'm about two and a half. So that's plenty good enough. And the reason you put the nut on there is because this little head that you can drive it in with, you can see I struck it to the side once. Need some practice on the hammering skills. But then when you back the nut off, if there's anything that was damaged here, it'll just re-spin the threads off. That's why you want the nut on there. So on this Richie, Water, they give you this little bag with all your stuff in it. And there's a couple of things that you need right out of the gate. One is this stanchion tube. Here's your water tube. And what I'm looking for is the nut in this that goes with the stanchion tube. We'll talk about that here in a second. So that's there. But then what I need is they give you the big fender washers that go with your 3 8 anchors you had to buy. They give you the foam tape to create the weatherproof seal because you don't want cold air. You don't want cold air leaching into your system to your foundation. And when we're talking foundations, that's... I didn't pour these. They're not my foundation, as you can see. They left the forms on them, and the seam in is short of the top of the forms. Um, it really should be over the forms, and it should be sloped down. Richie will actually give you the pad dimensions and everything you need. Um, these were already here, so we're just going to run with them. We're not in severe, severe cold weather, even though it can get down in the negatives here. This is going to use what's here. And then whatever we learn from this summer or this winter, we'll fix this summer. 
trying to catch these edges so that it doesn't allow any cold air to come in through here because that's where you'll have your issues especially if cold air starts getting inside the the enclosure from lessons learned what i figured out is that now i need to take this stanchion and so what the stanchion does is it sits right up here in the top part and it brings your water feed line and everything up here so it actually goes in this hole right here so this is where my hose is going to run to the barb and i'm also going to run a heat tube that's your drain on that side so we stick this nut in here and the stanchion and get it good and tight so we don't have any leaks done into our bottom area and so now then there you go our stanchions installed so the next thing small flat head and they supply you with this watertight enclosure here so we're going to go ahead and we're going to spin all this off so we can free up our, our heat trace too i'm going to show you how that goes or at least how i assume it goes based off how i interpreted the instructions and i've ran them this way on the other ones and it seems to be working fine so here is my heat trace element this tube that we just installed, which is right here where the water supply line is going to come up from our valve up through here to the float. This actually goes up and over around the float. And how we do that, so I put the rubber hose in the first time and this is very soft and flexible. So it wasn't that, wasn't that much fun getting it routed. So then what I figured out is, is that all you have to do is route this first and then the 3 8 hose is much stiffer so here we go i got it up there now here's what richie wants you to do and it actually works on the other ones when the cold water was coming through i could feel it heating up when we applied power so this is going to come up here's my valve assembly right here so this is my valve make sure there's no twist in the hose we're going to come down around here and then we're going to very gently loop it over and then this will make more sense when i put the hose in because you guys are going to see that it traces down the hose as well so this is how they provide heat to keep your float from freezing because it sets up at the highest point if you will above the water line so this is really can't really see if you can see some of the grass sticking to it this is actually really kind of sticky so then you see how that's looped around right there it doesn't interfere with my float at all but that's how i want it and then we take this this piece right here and again without the hose in here it's much easier to feed this down through here and there we go and it sits something like that and since we're working on this We'll go ahead and put the rubber hose in there. Included supply line hose. They also include the uh, clamps for you as well. You don't have a lot of room in there. Actually, it's not bad, but you don't have an incredible amount of room. So make sure and you check that your hose clamps are fed through proper before you get into a tight position that makes life just not fun so now what we do is very gently see how much easier it is to push this through so I feed this through and then I work the holes on the barb fitting there perfect there we go happy with that and then we will just tighten it up And we're gonna go back through here and we're gonna zip tie this when we're done. There we go. I like to get the hose on both sides and you'll see why whenever we zip tie this up that it works really good like this. So there, now, I'm, now I've got all my stuff in there and that's prep, that's tightened. The float will fix later. 
and then we'll take our rubber hose here and just to keep it out of the way we'll just pull it out to the side next thing i'm going to do is get my electrical plug put in i bought an eaton lighted plug um, you can hardwire these in i'd rather have it plugged in just because if i need to take it off real quick it's as easy as disconnecting the hose unplugging the unit four nuts and i can slide the whole thing off and i can access it so if you had it hardwired you could still do the same thing but you would have to have enough wire to spool to be able to offset it and i just don't want to mess with that plus i like seeing this plug lights up green it actually lights up really bright so you can pull the panel and then without even have to open the waterproof box or anything you can see the green glow even in the daylight so you know you got power so we've got the plug on the end this ends prepped they already provide a junction box in here which is right here so i really like these little clips probably not supposed to be used on copper strand however that's what i got so it's where we're going there we go all right Woo. okay through the watertight cover we go up in here we go tighten that down see a little bit of the casing call that good and then it's as simple as making sure you get the right color to the right color done so that one's there let me just tuck all these in here like so make sure all my cables are back down in there yep what you doing big man okay with the water situated we've got the heat trace up here the hose out we've got the plug in so now we're ready to get it on the foundation get it installed and bolt it down there we go water line on so now we got that connected we just kind of twist twist it a little bit so it pulls it over towards there that's hooked up now so electrical's hooked up water's hooked up now and then we just have to finish out okay, running the heat trace line which it never fails it's always going to be on the opposite side from where you want as we get ready to run this line basically the instructions from richie where you just zip tie it around down and around your valve so it's basically going to be zip tied around the line like that and then i'm going to stuff the rest of this pigtail down in the uh, frost pipe down there so we'll start at the top and work our way down and this is where we originally ran those two that heat trace up from the bottom up to the top i'm coming around the valve right here's my valve and then i just zip tie this right like that so it pinches this around the valve so there's a heat loop around the valve and then honestly i don't really see the need to zip tie anymore because these are up against the pipe right here you can see one runs on each side so they're going to warm this water line too so i'm going to call that one good so there we are that float is set up we're good to go so then we just move down to the bottom here and we're going to do the same thing around the bend if you will with this hose right up in here so we're just going to start zip tying these up and together and then from there once you have it on the hose like this and basically all you have to do and this electrical is kind of in my way is just make sure that it's around the valve part as best as you can and then just start stuffing it down in that hole again you just try to get it as far down in the frost pipe as you can this is not this cable can overlap itself as long as it's not zip tied together overlapping itself according to the instructions so if i just want it around my valve mainly to keep that from freezing as well and there we go so you can see 
should be good to go. It's around the valve. Now then, I've got the plug in. I've got that plug in. So let's try it out here. So according to Richie, I believe it should be about two inches below the top. doing right now is just adjusting my float out so now that that's in this is working right that just sits on top and then let's go turn on the power and we were going to need to reset our gfi so we're resetting the gfi so i just take my long little thin screwdriver so i can reach the button and then if you watch in there it's going to Turn green if you look in there you see the you see the green light right there from the plug that lets me know that the heating elements have power and that everything is working properly so we're good and water installed third water heater installed It's been a little over a month since we installed the Richie waters. As you can see, the horses are using them and we've had no issues with them freezing or anything like that. Nothing like the issues that we had before with the Browers. So we're, we're very happy that we decided to go with Richie and I think the horses are excited as well. The only maintenance that I have to do on the waters is every other day drain them out and clean the bottom of the bowls out. Other than that, they're self-sufficient and are an excellent choice for waters if you're looking for a watering system for your horses.